This is Riley. We've had her for a little under two years, and she's part of our family now. She even helps me on projects, like the laundry room. Today I'm going to show you how you can turn your pet into a nice wooden carving, just like this one. This will also work with any other image, so feel free to experiment. Your first step is going to be to turn your image into a cartoon. This step is really easy because you can find an application that does all the work for you. I jumped into the app store and typed in the word cartoon. The one that worked for me is called clip to comic From there, I just selected a picture that would show my dog's face. Then I printed that image and it would be the template for our project. I cut out the general shape and then attached this picture to my wooden board using a thin layer of wood glue. This board is 3 fourths of an inch thick and 7 inches wide. I chose oak wood because it stains well. I let this dry for approximately half hour and started setting up my router. It's also handy to have clamps just to secure the piece. For precision, I used a 1 8 of an inch router bit. Then I secured my piece to the tabletop using some clamps. Since I had to route out the shape, I had to make sure that the piece was secure. After securing the bit, I had to pick a depth. I used another equally thick board just to reference how far the bit would go. At this point, I was ready to start. I knew that I just needed to route out the black outlines. And if you do try this, I recommend you wear some kind of safety goggles and some kind of respirator too, since this project will fling up a bunch of dust. Be sure to grip the handles very tightly for stability and try to keep the work area clean. If you're losing track of where you're at, or if you just need to stop, don't be afraid to do so. It's a better alternative to making a mistake. After that, I started cleaning out any leftover debris with a pocket knife and a vacuum. The goal is to fill these grooves with epoxy, so we want to make sure that there aren't any wood shavings in there. Once that was all cleaned up, I took out my orbital sander and threw on some 60 grit sandpaper. This is to help clean the surface before adding the epoxy. After only a couple of minutes, the outline started becoming very visible. If you like what you've seen so far, please consider liking and subscribing. I do all sorts of random fun DIY projects and I'd really like for you to be a part of them in the future. I vacuumed the surface off camera one more time and then I brought out my epoxy. This is a two-part epoxy, and the ratio is one to one. This just means that you need to mix an equal amount of the two bottles provided. To color the epoxy, I used alcohol ink. I would have used black ink, but I didn't have any, so I just mixed a few together until it looked that way. Then I started pouring this into the board, making sure that it got into every groove. It kind of looks like venom, doesn't it? Next, I used a heat gun to make sure that the epoxy would expand and fill all the grooves. Then I threw on another layer of epoxy and went over it with the heat gun one more time. I gave it two days to dry and then started sanding it again. This time, the sanding was to get rid of any of the excess epoxy. For the sandpaper, I went from 60 grit to 120 to 180. In only a few minutes, our piece was looking really good. And this part is optional, but to make sure that the epoxy had a little bit of shine to it, I sprayed the piece with water and started sanding it with 1000 grit sandpaper. Sandpaper this fine won't really do much to the wood, but it'll definitely smoothen out the epoxy. While I waited for my piece to dry, I clamped it to the table and got ready to make the shape. I just cut my shape based on the outline of the epoxy. This would have definitely been easier with a jigsaw, but I don't have one. Once the shape was cut, I sanded the edges to make them smooth. Then I used Varathane's Early American Wood Stain because that color matched Riley best. I tried to steer clear of the eyeballs so that I can make these a different shade of brown. 
For this, I used Verithane's Kona Wood Stain, but they looked almost identical. I just don't think there was enough contrast between the two. To really seal the deal and give this adequate protection, I used Verithane's water-based polyurethane. Once everything is dry, you can actually turn this into a wall decoration. I got this sawtooth hanger kit for like a dollar at Home Depot. I struggled with it a bit at first, but that's because my fingers are way too big to manage these tiny nails. If you've made it this far, then you now know how to make this piece. With that in mind, it's nice to know that this piece will truly be unique. And whether you hang it up in your garage or put it in your office, this will be an awesome decoration to have. 